When I was a young child, I had a lot of G.I. Joes and Ninja Turtles and X-Men action figures, and I would often have separate shows for them when I would play with the toys. I'd have the G.I. Joe series, I'd have said Turtles and X-Men. They wouldn't cross-contaminate, they would stay separate. Um, the episodic runs were pretty powerful. Some would take place in the bathroom on the kitchen sink. Some would be in the bathtub. They, they'd have like a water sequence. It was, a, it was an exciting time. But what inevitably ended up happening in later seasons with my playing with the toys is they would start to intermingle. These shows were getting boring. I needed to spice things up a little bit. So suddenly out of nowhere, Wolverine's going up against Leonardo and Michelangelo. Donatello's fighting Sergeant Slaughter. It's the whole thing became a nightmare to balance, uh, a nightmare to produce. The show was struggling to keep an audience of me invested. And I, eventually I just stopped playing with the toys. I just, I just didn't care anymore because what were the stakes really? Uh, how was an audience supposed to keep up with what was happening? At the end of the day, it was just fan service without the emotional investment. Anyway, I don't know why I'm bringing this up. I'm here to talk about the Book of Boba Fett season one. If my analogy was lost on you at the beginning, maybe that's a metaphor. I always confuse the two. I don't think people really know the difference, honestly. They pretend, but they don't. I was actually talking about the Book of Boba Fett there. Because what this show offers is very little until the halfway point when it decides it's no longer just about Boba, now it's about Mandalorian. Now it's about, there's gonna be spoilers, by the way. I'll give you some time to think if you wanna push through on this. Okay, it's not just about Boba, it's about the Mandalorian. It's about little Grogu. That little baby Yoda, he's back. He's better than, no, he's not better than ever, he's, he's back. Some will argue and have in the YouTube comments that this was the plan all along, it's a shared universe. Uh, they, they had to cross paths. That's fine. I, I assume so. Boba was in The Mandalorian. Nobody gave two shits. The difference is, here, we're actually progressing the Mandalorian story and Grogu's story. A lot of big things happen. And now we're going into The Mandalorian Season 3, if that's even a thing anymore, and we are expected to have watched this show, a much lesser show across the board. The naysayers will say, so what, Adam? You still watched it. You still got your information. I'm not here for me. I'm here for little Adam that maybe doesn't care about Boba Fett because he was a dumb character all along and doesn't want to watch his show. But he loves little Grogu. He loves the Mando. And now he's lost when season three comes around. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. Oh, so just have him watch episode five, six, and seven of Boba Fett. He doesn't want to watch it. He has no interest. And it all kind of comes together, it congeals in episode 7, where we have the Power Ranger kids on their hover bikes. Uh, we got the Blue Man group cowboy who's just there out of nowhere now and, and killed pretty unceremoniously. What a fun character to introduce and kill off right away. We have a fucking Rancor come out of nowhere. Sure, he was teased early on when the twins of Jabba the Hutt actually gave Boba Fett one to keep for no reason? As a gift? As a peace offering? Or more as like a, this is the power we have. We were able to get a Rancor, give it to you, like it's nothing. I don't really get their game. I really don't. I don't know the logistics to even capture a Rancor, strap it down, and get it into that cage down below. Who Who's helping Boba do this? The guy can barely walk half the time. He's out of shape. I didn't want to watch a show about a bounty hunter in his 60s who's clearly eating well, uh, doesn't look intimidating, and no one around really cares who he is. I wanted John Wick Boba Fett. I wanted the guy shooting rockets, blasting off his wrists, using his boots, his thrusters, kicking ass. Anytime he does something cool in this show, it's in slow motion. Why is the cinematography and the action so much worse in this series than in Mando? I, I'm completely befuddled by it. Especially when they're supposed to be connected. If you will humor me for a minute, let me just paint you a picture. The Book of Boba Fett, which isn't called that anymore because that's a dumb title. Boba Fett opens inside of the Sarlacc pit. He burns the shit out of that thing climbs out by using some blades on his wrist. <laughs> 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 
uses the thrusters on his pack, blows out the top of that thing's guts, psh, lands. He's in pain, he's beaten up, he's pissed. A sand rider or some other creature comes along to see what's going on, psh, kills him right away, no questions asked. This Boba Fett isn't good, he's not friendly, he's vicious, he's angry, he wants vengeance. Kills the dude, takes the speeder bike or the whatever thing is is it he can ride on and goes looking for the nearest place where he can get weapons and revenge. Busts into a tavern, the music stops. Everyone sees this guy and knows instantly who he is. No one makes a move, no sound is heard. No sound but the ones coming from the drunken biker gang that just pulled up, walked in, Bumped Boba as they go by. Now we get to see the unbridled rage he has growing inside of him as he takes out five or six guys instantly, easily. <laughs> Helmet stays on! Helmet stays on while he does this. After his killing spree is completed, he pulls up a bar stool, holds his hand out, and we just see the <laughs> shot glass slide in. Bartender knows what he wants already because these people know him. He's feared across the galaxy. He's a bounty hunter like no other. But boom Title comes up. We're off to the races. Now, if it was up to me, this show wouldn't even exist to begin with because we already have a bounty hunter type show with the Mandalorian. Why do we need to? It's too late to ask that question. But since we do have the show, and they decided not to go the John Wick route, they decided to go the uh, old, decrepit bitch route, we have to talk about what's been going on. The season is structured really in two parts. Part one is Boba Fett getting his shit together, being trained, why he needs to be trained at 60 years old when he's supposed to be a great bounty hunter. We'll set that aside, I've already complained about it in the past. And taking over Jabba the Hutt's rule in Jabba's palace. Boba Fett has changed though, he's softened since his time as a bounty hunter, which we never got to see. Um, and that's kind of the character that people liked. Instead, he's kind of a, a wise old grandpa who, who wants to talk shop, he wants to delegate, he wants to come to the table. That is not exciting! So now part two kicks in and it is exciting because we're following a much more interesting character. Unfortunately, as good as the Boba Fett Mando episodes are, I still think they suffer from being part of this series. I don't think it looks as good, first off, as the Mandalorian, which I thought was more gritty, darker, edgier, more adult. And as the show goes on, it gets even more childish instead of ratcheting up into a more vicious final act. The seventh episode is a nightmare to watch. I was sitting there so emotionless the whole time. Even moments that should have been great that I knew were coming, I think every single person knew were coming, where Grogu would inevitably save Mando twice with the Force, were just not done that well. The Rancor coming in and fighting was cool, kind of. I feel like it didn't earn that yet. I didn't see Boba Fett really do any training with the Rancor. It all happens off camera, really. It just felt too soon. I will say the animation on the Rancor is pretty awesome. I love that they kind of infused a little bit of that stop motion into the creature. That was well done. I'll give the animators some props there. As for the sets, they felt just like sets. This is the first time in all the seasons of these shows, The Mandalorian and Boba Fett, where I thought, man, this is really low budget TV show crap. It looks like they have three sets they keep kind of repurposing. So when characters are on the other side of, I guess, Tatooine or the town, it feels like they're just around the corner. So I don't believe that they can't get over there and help. Like there's moments where it's like one dude fighting a giant robot thing from the prequel era. And I'm, I'm just thinking like, where, where is everyone else? This set looks like it's a 10 by 10. Get over there, help. It all really goes back to my mentality at the beginning of this review, my analogy, if you will. It's all about how you play with your toys. Uh, some kids, when I would go over to their houses, would just smash the toys together, and this is how they thought playing was, and I hated it. Because sometimes they'd hit my hand when I'm just trying to like build up the dialogue or lead into a battle, and it hurt. And I hated that kid's playing technique. I didn't want anything to do with it. 
I prefer to flesh out the characters, make them interesting, make them feared. I don't think introducing new villains for four minutes at the end of an episode only to have them defeated right away in the next is compelling. I also think it's really hacky storytelling to take two seasons of a show's character and pull him into yours without really letting audiences know at all and then concluding a lot of their arcs. Overall, The Book of Boba Fett is a miss for me. It was entertaining enough to sit through, but not entertaining enough to recommend to anyone. It's just such a weird, messy experience. Someone commented, this was, this was a favorite of mine, they said, books do this all the time, Adam, you genius. They'll have full chapters dedicated to another character they talked about briefly in a previous chapter of the book. Right. They'll do a full chapter from a different perspective from a character from that book series. What they won't do is conclude a character arc from an entirely different book series in a new one. That's insane. That's like if J.K. Rowling would have done three Harry Potter books, then released a Fantastic Beast, and concluded some of Harry's shit in that. Now, I know. They take place at different time periods, but this is the first example that comes to my mind where there's those shared book universes. It, it just, it doesn't happen because it's so dumb to do it like that. So the look isn't quite the same. The feel is different. I, I like my stuff consistent. When things stop being consistent, they start getting shit distant. That's a word I just made up and it, it doesn't really work at all. And neither did the book of Boba Fett. Those are my thoughts. Let me know if you have some. I'm sure you do. Put them in the comments below. If you liked the video and had a good time, feel free to hit the like. Subscribe as I put out a lot of movie related content and on occasion, TV show. There's also a notification bell. Make sure to hit that or Grogu will be sad. And you don't want to make that little baby cry. See you around. You made it to the end credits of the video. And thankfully I don't have to replace any of my body parts with dumb mechanical pieces like they do in that show. What I do have to offer you though is this. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies and right here on YouTube via the member join button. You can, you can become a member at either of those places, get access to badges, uh, exclusive videos, and you're helping me out. You're helping me grow the channel and that's really the end game here is to continue to grow and flourish. And if you decide to do so, thank you very much.